couple times over the course of the day already. Uh, it's done some very nice work, uh, stochastic geometry, also to applied to cellular uh, communication networks. Uh, he's at Orange Labs in uh, Paris. And so, uh, Mohammed, uh, please uh, take it away. Okay, thank you very much. Um, thank you, everybody, for being here, to the organizer also to invite me and to organize this uh, nice uh, conference. So uh, I sh will show you today a work done with uh, Bartek uh, called How Performance Metrics uh, Are Related to Traffic Demand in Large Cellular Networks. Does it work? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Uh, in Large Cellular Networks. So this work is uh, done in collaboration uh, in many papers with uh, Miodra Jovanovic. Um, so, the outline of my presentation is the following. So after a short introduction, I will uh, describe the homogeneous network model, some homogeneous network model. Um, then I will focus on the performance of this model uh, s through several steps. The first step is the typical cell model, so we'll define what, what is it precisely. Then I will uh, show you that some equations will be relevant. We call them the cell load equations. After that, I will give you a result about the average user throughput in large homogeneous cellular network. And finally, I will describe a simplified model called mean cell model. After that, I will show you how to tackle inhomogeneous uh, networks over, for example, a large country. We uh, aim to calculate the performance of a network at the scale of a large country. And this is done in this section. And finally, I will show you the uh, numerical results. So, uh, so this is an, uh, the introduction. The performance metrics in cellular networks are uh, three, uh, we will consider three major metrics. The cell load, defined as the proportion of time where a cell has at least one user to serve. Then the mean number of users in the cell. And finally, the user throughput. Okay, so these metrics depend on the traffic demand, obviously, so they should take into account the dynamics of call arrivals and departures. They also depend on the base station positions, uh, positions. Uh, so when these uh, positions are irregular, as in real networks, the performance will vary across uh, the different cells in the, in the network. And finally, we should take into account the uh, dependence between the uh, different cells through the interference and I will show you that some load equations will solve this problem. So in this work we will uh, propose a global analytical approach which uh, accounts for all of these aspects uh, and uh, we will compare our results to real field measurements at the scale of a country. Okay, so let's begin by the uh, homogeneous uh, model. So the base station positions are located according to a point process which we denote by phi and which we assume to be simple, stationary and ergodic only. There is no Poisson assumption here for the moment. Um, the intensity parameter of this process we, is denoted by lambda and then we assume that each base station x, x, n transmits the power which we denote by Pn, which may be as a general uh, mark, so there is no assumption about independence or the particular distribution of these marks for the moment. Uh, so the propagation loss comprises two terms. The first term is deterministic, which we denoted by L, so this is a function which we assume simply measurable from R square to the positive line, uh, and then a random effect which may model the shadowing typically. Um, and the shadowing between base station X1 and the uh, location Y is modeled by some measurable stochastic process, as general as you want, which we denote by SN. So it is SN from the user location Y to the base station location XN. We assume that these processes, SN, are general mark also, general marks. No assumption for the moment about independence or the distribution of these marks. Okay, so the power received from base station XN at some location Y may be expressed here by the transmitted power multiplied by shadowing divided by the deterministic propagation loss. The inverse of this quantity is denoted by L in this presentation. So with these, within this model and with these notations, we can calculate the SINR at some location Y uh, when the base station location is uh, the process phi by this expression. This is the received power, this is noise power, and this is interference. Uh, 
Where here, so this is the noise power uh, denoted by n, which is assumed simply a non negative number. And the interference is pondered by some factors phi y, uh, which are also general marks for the moment. So they does not model for the moment the activity of the base station. They may be as general as you want. Okay. Uh, now, what is the service model? Each base station X in our process phi serves the locations Y which, are, uh, which have the uh, smallest uh, propagation loss among all the base stations. So this is the cell of base station X. Now, a single user served by base station X at location Y will get some bitrate which we denote by R which is some deterministic function of its assign R. And we call this quantity peak bitrate. The particular form of this function, assumed simply measurable, will not play any role for the moment, and it depends, in fact, on the actual technology we uh, consider to support the uh, physical link. Um, now, each user in a cell gets, we will assume that each user gets a, an equal portion of time. So if there are k users in a cell, say y1, yk, each one will get a bitrate equals to his big, big peak bitrate, depending on his location, divided by k. So this is just a transcription of what we say in mathematical terms. Now, the traffic model we consider here, we assume that there are gamma arrivals per surface unit and per uh, time unit, and we assume variable bitrate traffic, so at their arrival, users have to transmit some volume of data, uh, of data at a bitrate which may be decided by the network. The arrival locations, the inter-arrivals between the users, and the data volumes are assumed independent from each other. We will assume that users don't move during their calls in the present presentation. So, the traffic demand per surface unit, is de denoted by rho, will be equal simply to gamma divided by mu. So this is a classic for uh, all of you. And the traffic demand in cell X will be simply this traffic intensity multi multiplied by uh, the surface of the cell of base station X. Now, with all these notations, what, what is the performance of a given cell? The service in some cell X is stable when the traffic demand doesn't exceed some critical value which we denote by rho c here, which is given by this expression. And we call it the critical traffic. Now that it is simply the harm harmonic mean of the peak bitrate, and this is related to the uh, assumption that we assume that the user doesn't move during the call. When there is mobility, it should be here the arithmetic mean. But when there is no mobility, it is simply the, uh, the harmonic mean. Um, the user throughput may be expressed simply as the difference between the critical traffic demand and the traffic demand. The number of users is given by this expression. And the probability that the base station is not idling is simply the minimum between some parameter theta and 1, where theta is given by this expression. It is the ratio between the traffic demand and the critical traffic demand. It is given by this integral. And we will call the cell load. So we have in this slide all we need to capture the performance of each single cell in this network. Okay. Now, how about the whole network, the global performance of the network? Um, are there some macroscopic metrics which will characterize the behavior of all the network? So to do this, we will just take the spatial averages over a window sufficiently large and by the ergodic theorem of point processes, at least the discrete version, these averages will converge to the palm expectation of the respective quantities um, over the typical cell, which is simply the cell of base station zero under the palm probability. So for the traffic demand, we have just this convergence here. For the cell load, we have this result here. We get the the palm expectation of the cell load of base station zero. And we have analogous conversions for all the other parameters. Now, what are these characteristics for the typical cell? Uh, for this, we, we need some technical uh, assumption. So, recall, remind that till now we have made 
now assumption about the, the process of uh, base station locations, but we need to assume that uh, the location zero for uh, a user located at zero, it belongs to a unique cell almost surely. So this is a technical uh, condition to uh, apply the inverse formula of palm calculus. So by this formula, the typical cell traffic demand is given simply by this ratio. The traffic demand intensity divided by the intensity of base station locations. We have also another uh, beautiful formula given the load of the typical cell as function of or in function of the uh, expectation, the stationary expectation of the inverse of the peak bitrate of the typical user. So here you have the relation between the two points of view, the typical cell point of view and the typical user point of view. Okay. In fact, the, uh, all the, these results hold true, whatever is the point process of base stations, not necessarily Poisson, and what, whatever are the marks phi, phi y, pondering the interference, provided that they follow the stationarity of the point process, of course. In fact, when we go back to reality, a base station transmits only when there is all, at least one user in the base station. So it is natural to take phi y as the probability that the base station is not idling, which is given by the minimum of its load and one. So in this case, the SINR is given by this expression, where here we have the probability that the interference base station Y is not idling. But recall now the expression of the cell load of base station X. It is given by this equation. So if you put this expression of SINR here inside this function, you see that the cell loads are related to each other but some by this nonlinear system of equations. And we call these the cell load equations. So the solution of this equation will give you the load of each base station in your network. Now, here I give you a result about the average throughput of a user in this network. So let's define this uh, throughput as just the ratio of the mean traffic, uh, mean uh, volume of data requested by each user divided by the mean service time of the user in a window A, which will become large, uh, intersected with the stable part of the network. Applying Little's law and the ergodic theorem, we can get an explicit expression of this bitrate, which is just this ratio, which you know what is it, multiplied by the probability that location zero is in the stable part of the network, is served by a stable cell, divided by N zero, which is the uh, expectation under palm probability of the number of users in the typical cell multiplied by the indicator function that the typical cell is stable. So here you have an explicit expression of uh, the bit traits given in your uh, network to, a, to a, a user in average, but unfortunately these two quantities have not analytical explicit expressions. So here uh, the motivation, uh, this motivates us to uh, um, propose an approximate model, which we call the mean model. Question? Yeah? So, do I get correctly that some cells can uh, load up if need be and others uh, remain stable? That's the, the there's no, that in, in, the, in, the, in the network? Yeah, when, when you solve this system of equations, some of your cell loads will exceed one, and the, the, the corresponding cells will be uh, unstable, and the others will be stable. So what is the mean cell model? In fact, it is a virtual cell. It's, it is a mathematical object which doesn't exist in the reality of your network with the a traffic demand equals to the traffic demand of the typical cell in our previous model and with a load equal also to the load of the typical cell in our previous model. Okay? Now you define the other parameters, which are the critical traffic demand, the user throughput, and the number of users, just by copying what happens for a real cell. So the critical traffic for the uh, mean cell model is simply the ratio between the traffic demand and um, the cell load of the mean cell, which is given by this expression. 
you uh, also define the throughput of the user in this model by this expression and the mean number of user users by this expression. Okay. So this is the mean cell model. It is a more sim simple than the uh, typical cell model, and we will see that it captures what happens in reality and what happens in the typical cell model. Okay, but before this, you need to propose uh, an equation for the mean cell model which will replace this one. So what is this equation? So recall that the uh, the cell load of the typical cell is related to the stationary distribution of the SINR by this equation. So we propose to solve this single equation. The load of the mean cell is related to itself by this equation, where here we ponder the interference by uh, minimum of the cell load of the, the, the mean cell and one. So we have one unknown, one equation, we solve it, we get uh, the load of the mean cell and we will see that this is, will be a good estimate of the average of the loads of all the cells in the, net, in the network. Okay. Okay, now I move to the second part of my presentation. What about a large network over a country mixing urban, suburban and rural zones? To do this, I will consider, I will show you some scaling laws for homogeneous networks uh, and I will make the assumption that the path loss now, the, the deterministic part of the propagation loss, has the uh, famous uh, some power of the distance, where k and beta are some given parameters. Now consider some scaling factor, alpha, positive. And let's do the following operation. We scale all the locations of base stations by this factor alpha. And we scale down the traffic intensity by alpha squared. We also scale down the uh, parameter k by alpha and we uh, modify, the sh we consider the shadowing processes S prime given by this expression. While we maintain the same powers in the scaled network as in the original one. And let's denote by some prime all the parameters corresponding to this uh, scaled network. Okay? So this is a mathematical object, and we have the following interesting results about it. If we assume that the interference factors of the scaled networks are the same as the interference factors of the original one, then we can show that the cell of the modified, the uh, scaled cell is given by this expression here, while the traffic and the other parameters of the two networks are exactly the same. Okay? And as a, an interesting corollary of this proposition, we can show that if we take now the interference factors related to the cell load by this uh, uh, formula for the original network, but also for the scaled one, then the load equations of the two networks are exactly the same. So they will, be, they will get uh, the same uh, uh, solution, then the uh, loads of the two networks are the same, and by the, the previous proposition, we will get that the parameters of the two networks are exactly the same. A second corollary of this proposition is that if we assume also that um, the uh, interference factors of the two networks are the same, then under the palm probability, the traffic and the cell load of the typical cell are the same for the two networks. And this means that the mean cell model for the two networks are exactly the same. Okay. Now, how to apply this to get the performance over a large area covering eventually the whole, uh, <coughs> the whole country? Consider a country composed of several areas of different types and where the parameter k and beta depend on the zone where you are, but assume that beta is a constant, whereas the parameter k depends on the intensity of base stations in such a way that the ratio between k and the square root of lambda is a constant. Then in, in fact in this case the scaling laws say that locally for each homogeneous area uh, of this large and homogeneous network one will observe the same relations between the different characteristics 
and the traffic demand in this network. In other words, you have a single relation which characterizes what happens in all your network all over the country. And I will show you a numerical example validating this result. So this is my uh, numerical section and this, uh, this is the last section of my presentation. So this is the numerical setting, I will not go through it, but you have all the parameters to characterize the uh, model I'm uh, considering. Um, and let's go to the first result we, uh, we get. And this curve I show you in the x uh, uh, axis here, the traffic demand per cell in kilobit per second, and the y axis here give you the cell load. So the blue points here give the result for the typical cell model. We solve the cell load equations, we calculate the average of all the other base stations, and we get the blue points here. The black line is the result of the mean cell model. So you see that the mean cell model reproduces what happens in average in the typical cell model. The uh, red squares here give you the measurements in the real network in a typical European city. So you have here 24 points corresponding to the 24 hours of a day for this city. Okay, so you see that the uh, measured points follow the mean cell model and the typical cell model. This is about the cell load, average. In order to get to the question of Francois, what is, what is the proportion of unstable cells? And this is given by the green points here. The green points gives you the proportion of stable cells. So when the traffic demand is small, this proportion is equal to one. For a traffic demand about 400 or 500, some cells become unstable. And this answers to the question, why operators stop the traffic demand here? If you uh, see the cell load, the average cell load is very low, only 20%. So a cell is occupied only 20% of the time in average. And the answer is given by this, these points. Because when the traffic demand ex exceeds 400 or 500, some cells become unstable. Okay, let's now go to the results of uh, a large area, almost a whole country, and this is given by this slide. So here also the traffic demand per cell in abscess, and the cell load is given here over a large zone comprising many urban, suburban, and rural areas. And you, s you see that the measured points follow the mean cell modal result. Okay? So, as a, a conclusion, we propose in the present work two approaches based on stochastic geometry in conjunction with queuing theory and information theory uh, in order to characterize the performance in large irregular cellular networks. The first approach is called typical cell approach. It is based on spe spatial averages o over all the network. The second one is called mean cell approach. It is more simple but approximate, and the advantage is it is fully analytic. And you have to solve only one equation of one dimension to, to get all we, what you need for this uh, approximate model. We validate the proposed approach by comparing um, its performance to data from real uh, networks. And we have some ongoing uh, works we have, which have already uh, been published. The first extension is what about the spatial distribution of all these parameters, the cell load, the throughput of the cells, and we made this by simulation in this work here. And the other interesting question is also is what about multi-tier networks? How does the uh, cell load behave in a network comprising m multiple tiers? And I uh, will give you uh, the result in this uh, paper uh, also. Okay, thank you very much for your attention. I think Mohammed gets an award for not only not rushing the talk, but finishing 15 minutes ahead of time. Very interesting results.
um, match also what I've seen from some operator data. So it's very, very interesting. Yes, yeah, so we definitely have some time for some questions. Mm -hmm. So to go back to the, the, the plots. Um, so what it, what's not clear to me is I mean, what part of that plot is just pure queuing theory, that this is the demand for cell and, 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 and that's the cell load. And what part of this is the stochastic geometry? Yeah, uh, queuing theory gives you the uh, result for each cell. Mm. And stochastic geometry gives you the result for when you average over all the cells in your area. So when you see here the traffic demand per cell, it is, it is in fact the average traffic demand per cell averaged over all the cells in the network. Mm. And here also it is the mean cell load over all the cells in the network. And this is given by stochastic geometry. Because that determines the capture area per cell and, and the, yeah, the because, traffic that's captured in each cell. And that I mean, because if, if you plot the uh, individual cell performance, then you will get some points here which do not follow the line, some a huge uh, uh, set of points. And when you, stochastic geometry show you that when you average correctly your results over the cells in, the, in your network, then you get a behavior which may be predicted. Okay. Okay, well, if there's nothing else, we'll wrap up uh, day one of the workshop. And thank you very much, Mohamed. Okay, thanks, everybody. And we do hope you join us at the ATT.